So here's my test alarm panel. It's in the corner of my office. Uh, this is where I test and develop my pet project. Uh, right now the code name is the tank. And it's pretty messy and you know in order to test zones I have to short it out with a screwdriver. So we're going to clean it up and organize it. Uh, we're going to build a little stand to mount the panel and the keypad. Sort of a mini wall. And uh, yeah we're going to build a wall. Right? So I get the scrappiest wood I have, and you can see it's completely bowed. Uh, I don't have much of a plan. I know I want about 24 inches across, so I just cut this down. And then I, it's a little wide, so I rip the ends down. Uh, the ends are a little bit flatter than, than the middle. And I know I want through-hole tenons because that's going to offer the sort of the maximum stability and this panel weighs you know a fair bit and this is going to be a full-size wall so it needs all the stability it can get so just chiseling out the cheeks real quick i probably could have used the table saw to finish this job up a lot quicker but i'm outside and i'm just trying to do stuff real quick w without a full workbench or anything like that and here's where i'm trying to create the mortise and I thought if I drill through, uh, it'll be a little bit easier. Uh, it's not. I should have just taken this inside and, and uh, chiseled it straight through. I thought that this would also help tear out, and it doesn't. When I, when I, when I get through to the other end, there's massive tear out. A big chunk falls away. So don't do this if you're trying to do this. But it's pretty close. Pretty close fit. I'll fix it up later. So for the other tenon, I take it down into my workspace with real clamps and stuff like that. And I sort of mark out the size of the original and just go at it. Uh, this method seems like it takes a while, but it really doesn't. It's probably, oh, maybe six, seven minutes of uh, just chiseling trying to get it right. So I flip it over and start on the other side. And this combination square, the metal thing you can see in the top, is really handy for copying uh, unknown measurements. So I just copied where I started on the front, traced it out into the back, and they the holes met up pretty well. I had to you know, tweak the inside so they fit with a file and shave down some of the, some of the uh, parts that weren't perfectly square. And I tore out again with the file, so I don't know what's going on. But it fits. It fits pretty well. Yeah, there's the tear out problem. So don't... Well, it still works, you know. This is what happens. Sometimes you just got to go without a plan and uh, make stuff up as you go along. So now I'm going to cut some rails. I think, or styles. I think they're rails uh, horizontally across, to, so I can have some some real wood to mount the panel into. Add some more stability. And that's my cross cutting sled. I'm going to cut another piece. I'm going to rip this wide piece down and make uh, two more two more styles of it. It wasn't even the blade wasn't even tall enough to go through this whole piece because it was so wobbly. It was so warped. And that's that. And now I'm going to convert this on to ripping mode and rip this piece down. Um, yeah. So I'm not an expert in any of this stuff, but I get it done. And so I'm encouraging you guys to just try stuff, right? I mean, be safe when you're doing it, but sometimes you just need to do stuff without a plan and, uh, it works out in the end. Now, I'm this saw, I, I'm a pretty big wuss when it comes to this saw, and so what I do is I, right before the end, I am i don't want it kicking back, so I turn it off and then just power through the last bit, and now the, now the cut's complete. But if there's any kickback, then the blade doesn't have the momentum or energy to, to throw it directly at me. And that's a problem when you have the warped old wood. You don't know where the binds are. Um, it could You could release some tension in it and it grabs a blade and gets thrown at you. So I'm just trying to lay out where the, where the 
the rail should go so that you know I have a good place to mount the screw holes I decide that it's better to do this flat uh, rather than trying to do it floating in air so where do I want them laid out I don't know just just putting them down as long as they line up with the screw holes and I have a little bit area on top to run the cables through so I drill pocket holes in all my rails and just glue and screw nothing really uh, exciting about this part try to make sure they're square it doesn't really matter if they're square it's only two feet it's not like I'm gonna misalign anything and so we're done here's the completed wall if you will now I still need to glue uh, the tenons in. this is just dry fit right now I wanted to make sure that um, it was dry fit while I screwed the other things in I screwed the rails in and now I'm just gluing that's the only thing holding this holding this thing together is uh, through hole tenons and glue and it, it holds it very well and you can see I got my scrap piece of wood filling in the tear out uh, I glue that in too And uh, it's not bad. Yeah, it's a nice tight fit and they're flush. And so now I'm going to cut some hardboard. It's really windy outside. Whoops, there goes a clamp. And I have my like sheet ripping jig, which is just a flat board with uh, uh, angle iron or angle aluminum uh, drilled and screwed into it. And so that's straight. And I, I didn't want to overcut here uh, because I wanted the rest of this hardboard to be good. So I made my cut short and then I finished them up with uh, hacksaw, but hacksaw wasn't, really, wasn't working too well. So I took the blade out and just sort of did the last inch by hand. It's pretty tiring. So now it's time to glue this on the front of the wall there's the wall mm -hmm. gonna dry fit it and just pour a bunch of glue I didn't I didn't really roll it out I just made sure to use a lot because that hardboard the textured back really soaks up uh, a lot of glue so I put a lot down there and when I put the hardboard I just wiggled it back and forth a little bit um, then I weighed it down this is my stand for my chop saw and then actually my chop saw and that should be plenty of weight to uh, make sure the glue holds so then I moved on to painting it and my camera actually fell over so I don't have the painting outside the wind knocked it over I just had some leftover blue spray paint that I used and I let it dry out in the sun and now I'm going to mount the panel and I'm going to make sure that I knock out holes for the wiring first because uh, you got to hammer that thing pretty hard and I don't want to strip out any of the screws on this small, you know, wooden frame. These aren't real 2 by 4s or anything. And leave enough room at the top for wiring. So screw down the panel, screw down the keypad. And here's where I have my little micro breadboard with the switches. And so the jumper wires are straight from the zone and that passes uh, 12 volts over through the resistor and the panel knows that resistor and, and its value. And then when you close that um, switch, when you push the button and close the switch, it, it lowers the resistance because now you have uh, nothing. It's like another resistor in parallel that's nothing. The panel knows that and triggers that as either an open door or a motion sensor or a window all the sensors act the same in that they just uh, close or open a open the circuit. So either nothing goes through or it short circuits the um, resistor and the panel notices the difference. And so I can have three zones now. And I'm using the jumper wire just because it's easier to push into the breadboard than even uh, solid core wire and uh, connecting with my 
blue beans or dolphins or whatever you want to call them, these crimp connectors. You just use the back of um, needle nose pliers to crimp them. The back, not the front. And you don't need a special tool or anything like that. And there's the completed system. And I'm going to test it with my three zones. I have zone one and then I have zone five and six. And you can see here it says it's ready. That means all the doors and windows are closed. And there's no motion. And if you put it, you, if I push one of the buttons, hey, zone one's faulted, zone five and six are faulted. So everything's working with that. And now I'm going to uh, set up my my project, the Trouble Alarm Notification Connector. And it's a Arduino and a Raspberry Pi and um, a Pi Zero and a power source. So the Arduino takes the keypad signal, so you wear it up just like a keypad, and it's got these 12 volt uh, step down things so that uh, steps it down to 3.3 volts. The power is a DC DC converter, but uh, it also has a full bridge rectifier with the diode. So you can hook it up to the AC uh, wall wart. And it's just up to you if you want it to work uh, on the battery backup or not. So when the if the power ever goes out, do you want the Raspberry Pi um, pulling from your battery, which, you know, it'll still work, but it'll drain your battery more. Or do you just want it running up straight off the wall plug? Uh, up to you, depending on how you want to wire it in. And then you, uh, you know, after you set it up and connect to your Wi-Fi, you got this uh, internet-enabled keypad, and you can see me working with it, and I can arm and disarm, and I think I set the chime and all that stuff. So, you know, I, there's a link in the description if you want to uh, make your own or buy one or anything like that. It's got a full keypad too, a full virtual keypad, so you can uh, do any of the commands that you would do on a normal keypad. Chime, bypass, instant, all that stuff. And then it has the quick arm and disarm on the front. And so, yeah, go to the link in the description if you want to build your own. Uh, buy one. You can buy just the Arduino, and, and so you get the keypad bus in JSON format and you can start doing your own projects and all that stuff. You just need a screwdriver, hook it up to your alarm panel and you're good to go. I hope you have a great day. Get out there and hack on something.